Good morning. Cindy said, this is this thing here, she said, is from 1852. 1852. 1858. And she says, it's so old and it's even got a stamp on it. And I said, I'm from 1944 and I'm stamped with the image of Jesus. <laughs> Both antiques. <laughs> I'm an African one. Greetings in the name of Jesus. Ah, oh, it's lovely. Now, I know this has got to be for vid video, but I kind of like to see your faces. Is there, you're not allowed to put more light on in this place? I'm so sorry, but... Uh, uh, yeah, hello. We sang about light and we sit in darkness. I'm sorry if it wrecks that, but God bless you. Very lovely to see you all today. And Stan and Julie, you've, thank you. Fabulous to see old friends. They come to stay with us in uh, Orlando, but they're funny people. I promise you, pre preachers are. <laughs> and at, at, at one in the morning, he says, that man over there to that man, let's go and play darts. You know, and we've been, uh, we've been up since about 6 a.m. Right. <laughs> but anyway, it was wonderful, it's wonderful to see you. And Pastor Fred and Pastor Cindy, thank you once again Amen. for the privilege to minister here at this very significant season of this fellowship. And I know that it's the Lord's doing. May the Lord be glorified in this place. We say that and I wonder if we really know what we're asking. Do we really understand the glory? But we are about to find out. And um, in the house tonight and in the house tomorrow, the ladies will be meeting together. And uh, they've called that refresh. But only the Lord can refresh you. But we're going to go in the wind of what God has begun. Yes. And I said to Pastor Fred this morning, I've come to work with you as a team, both of us. What can we do to assist you? This is the work of the Lord, of which they care for. And if they invite somebody here, particularly me, I'm very conscious of the somber thing to be able to preach. I've never taken it lightly since a child. And I, I, I'm, 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 Greg always says, are you ready? I said, no, but I'm available. <laughs> because how are you ever ready? So I'm very grateful for the opportunity to minister to you ladies tonight. And I'm telling you, it's not really a ladies thing. So guys, you should be there. And I know the guys normally creep in, but you're forbidden tonight. Forbidden, isn't that German? You can't come tonight. No. And you can't come tomorrow. But ladies, I'm asking, I'm telling you that what happens tonight and tomorrow has to spill over into your homes and your husbands and your, and your boyfriends and your kids and everyone has to hear because this is a season for this church. And I have a letter for you. Hello, Dean. How are you, sunshine? Um, I have a letter for you. I have an envelope for you. And Pastor Cindy is going to hand it out at the door if you're coming tonight and tomorrow. You must take it home. It's for your eyes only. Now you're inquisitive. I said to her, we will not give it out in the service because they will not concentrate. Right. Right. Fiddle. Right. Fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. We, I'm a woman, I know. So, <laughs> so she'll hand it out at the end and um, you to, you to do what it says and be here tomorrow with it. Amen. Everyone said amen. amen. God bless you. Um, I want to minister this morning on the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You're about to see a story of two ships. One is state of the art and it lacks nothing. And its name is Corpus Christi. Corpus Christi, for those who don't know, it means the body of Christ. The other ship is called Rosa Mary, and it's in great distress, and it's in trouble. I don't know how many times I have seen that. The Holy Spirit spoke to my heart as I was praying for you as leadership. And I said, Lord, we can't. We're in such serious times. Yes. What must I do? I'm available, but what is your word? And I heard it as clear, lost at sea. 
That is called lost at sea. The church that does not save the lost is lost itself. Yes to the backslider. Yes to people who are weary. Yes to the sick. Yes that are weak. Those who are lame. Yes. But it's the lost. Those who have yet to surrender to Jesus Christ. The church is not a pleasure boat. But it is a lifeboat. And all hands are needed on deck. We have made the church a comfortable thing to be. And that is a great indictment, I believe, as a prophetic voice at this time. I wonder what sabotages us. We believe if I had a bigger facility. Sabotage, maybe we should be on the other side of town. Sabotage because there's not enough money. The tithes and offerings are poor because the pastor doesn't have anointing or enough anointing, or there's ineffective leadership. But the ultimate sabotage of the church is to not know her identity or her purpose. That's right. And that's when that film was made, which we were a part of, 2003. And every time I see it, I can hardly sit in my seat, I just want to fall before God. Yes. Will you open your Bibles this morning? I've got nothing for the screen. Open your Bibles to Matthew, please. I want to hear the sound of pages, please. And if they're not here, I'm speaking by the word of the Lord, I believe, into the life of this fellowship, which is really home for us. When I heard the singing again this morning, I thought, Lord, you brought us home. Is this what heaven is like? But it's only a foretaste of what is to come. And each one of you, God is calling today. And so I say, unashamedly and with no excuse, if there are comments that come, I believe they've been birthed in much prayer for the significant time of this fellowship. I've never preached this before. This is not a rehashed microwave meal heated up and given today. Get your Bibles in your life. You are not going to be able to stand without them. Begin to love God's Word. Matthew chapter 16. Jesus is talking from verse 13. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he was asking his disciples, who do people say that I am? And who is the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, and others Elijah, and still others say, well, you're Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And then he looked to them and he said, but who do you say I am? To them all. And one person replies, and he says, Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood never revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say to you that on this, that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overpower it, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound, and whatever you loose on earth will have been loosed in heaven." He's saying, Peter, upon your pronouncement, upon this revelation that's come out of your mouth, upon what the Father has just seen, upon that truth alone, me, Christ, I'm going to build my church. Yes. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. There's an outpouring in Wales, and I notice what they say. Every pastor, every leader, every board member, every worker in the church, we're going to have to start now learning to bow even lower so that Jesus comes in his might and in his power to stand in the midst of his church. So what is the church's ultimate sabotage? Is to not know her identity or her purpose. When Sarah died, Abraham needed a wife for his his son Isaac. 
and he sends Eleazar into an impossible situation. He said, I don't want a wife from these Canaanites. I want you to go back to find my own amongst my own people. And in an impossible to find a rose amongst thorns, he goes to search for her. And you can read this. Don't look at it now. Genesis 24. And I say to you today, again, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, you do not come to fellowship without a pen and paper. We are living in momentous days. Momentous days for both the church and for the world. And where sin abounds, grace does much more. And the greater the darkness, the greater the church. But she's at the moment, she needs a lot of cleaning up and a lot of brushing up and the glory of God to impregnate our churches. We don't even know what that means. So Eliezer goes to find this bride and he creates a wonderful story and he finds her and he bedecks her with jewels and things for her arms and, and even the family started to get in the way. So, well, you can't just take her. He said, ask her. She said, I'm going. And Eliezer is a type of the Holy Spirit sent in the world to draw out the bride of Christ. There are many names for the church, but Above all things, she's called the bride of Christ. And that is a message for you today. What we have seen today is about the church, the church's identity and the church's purpose. The Bible says that the bride has made herself ready. There are a lot of scriptures for that in Revelation. But when did this all start? It started way back with Moses in Exodus 19, 1 to 6. He says, you people, you know how I brought you out of sin. You know how I brought you out of the cruel, harsh, fiery furnaces of 400 years of servitude to those wicked Egyptians. I brought you out. He said, I brought you to myself and I want a people of my own possession. I want to possess her. And I want her to possess me. I want us to be inextricably one. And I want her to show for who I am. And if you read through your Bible, you're going to find the link in Malachi. It goes all the way through. Until 1,500 years later comes Peter. Open your Bibles, please. To 2 Peter, chapter 9, verse 10. Peter chapter 2, verse 9 to 10. I think I've got that a little bit wrong. There it is. 2 Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 2, my, my apologies. By the way, I've got pages here. Don't be afraid, I'm not going to keep you long. I know you're conscious of time. But we can't say, I said to a pastor, senior pastor in the city where I live, you want special speakers? And you bring them in, and everyone's blessed, and the church goes back to normal. Right. And I said, you want the Holy Spirit to move? But you have the hand it over at nine. Nine is worship to 9.30. And from 9.30 to, to 10.40, 9.45 is this. So Holy Spirit, come now and for now. And minister to the people between this time and this time. Because we've got multiple services and they're big park, parks to, cars to be moved from the parking area. I said, it's not possible. Greg has heard the conversation. And I, it's such an honor to be able to speak into their lives. But what do we want? What are you looking for? It's her identity as the bride of Christ. Now watch what Peter says, what Moses said 1,500 years before. He said, verse 9, you are a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. So that, everyone say, so that. Okay. You're not just to be possessed, but so that, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Was once you were not a people, but now you are a people. Once you didn't receive mercy, but now you've received mercy. 
We've got to take him out of obscurity and make him visible. And I'm not mad, I promise you. My heart is so yearning for this fellowship. But the intensity of the burden of the Lord on me is very strong. So strong that I'm awake often at night as the Lord has given me a download from the times in which we live. And I hear the same stuff coming out and say, Lord, Father, awaken your church. And all over the prophetic people are saying, Lord, awaken the sleeping giant. And especially in America. It's coming. Africa shall be saved, Reinhard Bonker declared. He's now, and we will be there in, in September. He said, God showed him very carefully, America shall be saved. But you've got to be involved in the process. John the Revelator saw the bride. He said, there was a number of human beings beyond imagination, beyond calculation. Who are they? And they were crying, worthy is the Lamb. Glory to, and the more that they called out, he said, but there were thousands upon thousands. Ten thousands, myriads upon myriads, and no man could number them. Who are they? They're the bride and you're there. You're part of that number. See your destiny. See your future. But that's not now. That's here. But he's preparing the bride. The Holy Spirit is preparing us. That's why there is sharp teaching. That's why there's teaching that stretches us. That's why people come into our lives to stretch us. You do not know yourself by yourself. You need somebody to help you, believe it or not. Thank God for a pastor who declares the riches of Jesus Christ in this church. Then one more scripture, and then I went no more. John 14, it sounds like a punishment. (laughs) But um, I, I don't... Pastor's given me the time that we need this morning. Take a deep breath. It's good. May the healing presence of Jesus fill this place. We look to you this morning, Jesus. Healing in our minds, healing in the way we think, the healing in the way we do church. We just need his healing presence. Jesus is talking. And you look at this verse, verse 23. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our abode. That word abode means he wants to sit sit down, settle down like this. I want to sit down amongst you. He wants to sit amongst us. And he said in talking to this wonderful verse, listen to this. He said, I want to make my abode. Now watch this. He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. I'm looking, sorry, for this verse here. Um, John, sorry, I'm in the right place. Where's the scripture if you... We'll come out in 15. Help me, somebody. Well, he said, we'll come and make. He said, if you do what I say, we'll come and make our abode in you. There it is. That is actually the word. He said, if anyone loves me, that's singular. He, singular, will keep my word. That's your responsibility and mine. And then suddenly it becomes plural. And we will come and make our abode in him. That is so extraordinary to me that out of the mouth of Jesus, he will come and live amongst his people. Not in this building, in your heart. Our lives are not our own. We've surrendered our lives. I have no right to myself. We need to be delivered of the need to be right even. That's why arguments happen in marriages, because you need to have the last word. It's a need to have your little, it's a need. We need to be delivered from that. We were bought with his blood. He paid a tremendous price for us. But the bride is making herself ready. And she has not tainted herself with the world. But I say, once again, that maybe it's difficult to tell really where the bride is today. Because the New Age philosophies have so penetrated the church Where there's bloodless, crossless, 
nameless God. They're having their meetings, they're singing our songs, they're doing their little words of knowledge, but it has no blood, and it has no Christ, and it has no cross. The secularization of America is to do what? Is to remove the Judeo-Christian values from the home, from the marketplace, from the church. We need to take heed. Cheer up, but we need to take heed. You're going to have to give an account. Sooner or later, you, my brother Tom, may not be alive, I may not be alive. But the day is coming you're going to have to give an account for what you believe. The day is coming. There's a shift. People maybe not say this is not your regular Sunday morning. No, it's not. We're not having church as usual. And I tell you, they're going to be, as sure as I, uh, my spirit, they're going to come more and more corrupt judges in America who will dictate the God of this world and its values and system. But the church is distinct from all other religions. And I know why. I had to find this out all on my own. It's not a revelation to me. I'm sure many others have seen it, but it was just what I heard. All religions are looking for God. All religions. They're seeking God. Christianity is the only expression where God seeks man. And it's here, Jesus said, two or three, that constitutes the church. Now, what is her purpose? We know our identity is the bride, but what is her purpose? It says, and you shall love the Lord God, Jesus said, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. The Amplifier says, from and out of, from and out of, from and out of, with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. And then you must love your neighbor the same way. And upon those two, hang, just like a, you can see a puppet here, it's not as a puppet, but hang all the law and all the commandments. Romans says that the law was fulfilled by love. Could never be fulfilled another way. And God is calling us, I believe, to a much deeper love of him. It's impossible, it's absolutely impossible to know Jesus and not follow him. If you know him and love him with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength, you will follow him. And if you're not following him, I suggest you don't know him. And I say, even on on a Sunday morning, this may be your very day to fall in love with Jesus Christ at a new depth. May you be convicted of that. May the Holy Spirit impress upon you those things. His disciples were offended at him. They didn't like the things that Jesus said. We don't want pillow prophets, do we? We want the men of God and women of God to come into our fellowships and come into our relationships and speak the word of the Lord from heaven like you spoke the prophetic word to these folks today. It's so enlightening. It's so wonderful. But they didn't like it when Jesus did, and they said they were offended at him, and they walked with him no more. That's why I said we've made the church comfortable. I read it this morning, at 4 o'clock this morning. Jesus said, be on your guard. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he says sorry and he repents, then forgive him. We never hear about rebuking of sin. Maybe I'm never invited back here. That's also okay. But today I will be obedient to the Lord. Because of the great love of God. The great love of God is in this place. And he loves us with such an everlasting love. We are not our own. We belong to him. Peter said, he said, are you going to go meet you? Are you going to leave me too? Are you going to go? You gonna go? Hmm? He said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. So our purpose is to love God. It's that simple. Because when you love God, it's easy to give and it's easy to be quiet and it's easy to speak and it's easy to pray and it's easy because the love of God is in your very DNA. It's bubbling up inside you. You just love people. You can't stop loving people. Loving people with loving God. Everything is out of, in and out of that love that is in. That's our purpose. And out of the purpose 
First, the bride is the identity. Secondly, is the purpose to love God with your heart and your neighbor as yourself. Number three, out of that purpose comes evangelism and deliverance and healing. This world is so fractured. I come from a very fractured nation, so does my beloved husband. Well, it's so wonderful to see him with me today. So we come from fractured lives. Every day I'm following up on my country. Sometimes my husband doesn't want to hear anymore. We need Jesus. We've got to invite him into every area of our lives. When praying for this church, I said, Father, may the glory of God so come upon this fellowship where the church meets. And may this, the police have to be traffic control yes. because there's so many cars. Yes. 25 years ago, there were seven churches in the city and now there are 47. Where is the identity in that? Where is the purpose in here? But if God calls the people here, 10, 20, 30, 40, to rad radically revolutionize you. Yes. You'll turn the city back to God in a heartbeat. Yeah. Grace, life, church. What a marvelous sense of identity and uniqueness in changing the name of this fellowship. Amen. Come on. You change the name. But the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, it was the same people. That's right. I said, Lord, can I say that? He said, I just told you. <laughs> it's the same people. Because it has to be more than that name change. I think it's a fabulous logo. I, the cross and the blood. Yes. It's an identity right there. Yes. But it has to be a change in the heart of every single person who sits under the sound of my voice and who's away on this Labor Day weekend and every child here, that there's a mighty visitation of God that your heart so changes to say, we are with this vision and we're going to go with all our hearts. Yes. It has to be the purposes of God. That has to be change in our hearts. You say, well, I don't know. Well, ask the Lord to show you. Right. Don't get your plan from man. Amen. Don't get your counsel. It's okay. Get into the word and the Lord will wash you with his word. There's a cry going out all over the world today that we can't do church as it is. We must impact our, our cities. We must impact our neighborhoods. And the unprecedented things that are happening in the church, I've written them down, but I'm not going to give them today. Absolutely marvelous. Daniel, Daniel Philander spoke at the World Pentecostal Conference on Friday night. 32 years old. Our pastor is 26 years old. He's Danish, half American, grew up in Denmark. A household name in Denmark. He was trading in 21 countries at the age of 16 years old. Brilliant mind. Five generations of Pentecostal, four generations, he's the fifth of Pentecostal preachers. Declare your kids the same man. Live it. I took a photograph of the kids today. And I said to him, when I first met him, Daniel, what are you doing in America? He said, God called me. I've left all the youth of Europe. He's very, very, very filled with God. 26 years old. I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm pastoring. How many people at church? He said, 30. I said, who are they? They said, they're all over 70. You can imagine my query. He said, God has called me to Orlando to pastor a church about two things. Worship and evangelism. Watch for his name. His name is Christian. Grace Church, you stand on the threshold of great things. The Spirit is calling you and I, every woman looking at me, every man. He's calling you to come up higher. And what does that mean for you and I personally? What are you desiring for? What are you longing? What are you praying for? What are you believing for? For your own ministry, for your future, for your destiny? What are you, where do you want to see change? 
Always looking forward. No, pastor. Your people must look up, and they are. They are. That's what you've been doing, is look to Jesus. It's everything that you say. It's every song that you sing. But it has to translate into an actual relationship with him. But you must be prepared to participate in your own miracle. How so? Look at the life of Lazarus when he died. And Mary and Martha, Martha says something that rivals even what Peter says. You're the Christ, the son of the living God. But they were still whinging at him because Lazarus had died. Now let's look at that because you need to see the words with your own eyes for this church. It's the, the story is in John chapter 11. Verse 40. Verse 38. Um, excuse me, let's go from verse 33. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews who came were also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and very troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? And they said, come, come and see, come and see. And Jesus, verse 38 says, he began to be deeply moved within, and he came to a tomb, and this morning I saw and something new this morning. He says, now there was a cave and there was a stone lying against it. And Jesus says, remove the stone. And they say, watch. Martha says, Lord, by this time there'll be a stench. She's been dead four days. And he said, did I not say to you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? And they removed the stone. There's the glory. There's the miraculous. For what does glory mean? I don't have anything here to show you. Glory has to do with weight. It's kabod. Yeah. That's why I said the glory has departed off the temple. Ichabod. It's to weight. The glory of God. We need the glory of God, the miraculous. When the glory of God is back in the church, look out. We've got to long for the glory of God, the weightiness of God in our fellowship. Then you're going to see signs and wonders and deliverance from demons and blind eyes opened. When the glory is back in the church, and I'm saying this under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, dead things in this church are going to come to life. Yes. And God is going to reverse the order of man th mad things. And if you long for him, he will smash tradition. Pastor Cindy said to me, she was right. The early church turned the church upside down. That's how they were known. That's right. But I'd said to Greg before, and I said to her, no longer. The glory of God is coming, and the church is going to turn things the right way up because everything is upside down. And you've got to participate in your own miracle. You've got to remove the stones yourself. Is this your home? Yes. Then rise up. And remove obstacles and singing in your thinking, stupid philosophies, vain talking, vain imaginations. They are blocks and obstacles to the glory of God. Yes. We have to have a complete purging of our own flesh so the power of God comes in and washes us in our deepest recesses. He says, You remove the stone. Why couldn't he, who said to Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth? Because earlier he said, there's coming a time when all the dead in Christ will hear. All, all the dead will hear the voice. But he didn't call everyone, he only called Lazarus. Why didn't he remove the stone? He says, you've got to remove your own obstacle. And it was a cave, and we sit in our cave with our obstacle across it. He said, you remove your stone. And he said, didn't you see? Don't you know you'll see the glory of God? And what was the glory of God? Can you answer it? I'll tell you. Happy am I. They had a dead brother. And he gave them back their dead brother. We've made it spooky things, you know, all this air and all these fancy things. 
the glory of God in Lincoln. I say, can Lincoln revive? Can Lincoln find the glory of God? I say, yes, you should be on your seat and shout, yes. 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 But you've got to remove your own obstacles. And you can't do that in your own strength. You've got to recognize them and get rid of them and declare them what they are. If you're a backslider and you're cold in heart and you're a fault finder, there's not enough church, not enough people, I'm saying to you, repent of those things. Turn around, walk the other way. What more must he do? I've really, 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 you know, on on the 18th of June, my husband came to me and brought me some, I'm never, I'm up always very early, but I thought I'd just linger here. I earned my way here. <laughs> it's my birthday. And then he said, some little flowers and a few little gifts, and he sang to me happy birthday. Then he said in his own wonderful gregarious way, he said, welcome to your 70th year. Oh. <laughs> I'll pull everything over the head and say, oh my dear Lord. But I say to you, you and I are responsible for our generation. And I say to the backsliders and those who are cold and hot, all of us, if you're writing a note, write it, think it, put it in your heart. Check your spiritual temperature often. Assume nothing. And I say personally, I never assume that man loves me, ever. I don't assume that they know I'm thankful I'm here. I tell them. He never has to assume that I love him. I tell him. You must check your own spiritual temperature. And I'll tell you how you can know, because you never think that the lost need saving. You don't even think they're lost. Pardon me saying this, but I'm having lunch with somebody, and I can't concentrate on my food. Now, I'm, a, I'm, I'm actually quite a kickback girl. But I had just my spirit was turning. I was looking at her, eating food, and looking at her, but I was elsewhere, engaged with her. And I said to her, gosh, look at all these people in this restaurant. Do you think any have ever heard of Jesus? She goes, well, I don't know. But do you think? Maybe they haven't. She said, maybe they haven't. I said, and if Jesus comes, they all die. They die without God. Have you think about that? She said, no. She ever thought that these people have never heard the good news and we sit and hear it every single week? She said, I never think about it. She was very honest. There was no condemnation. I said, thank you for telling me that because it just confirms. I tell you what. This ministry here is under the care of this beloved pastor. And he feeds the sheep. He rode a horse, but he never birthed a lamb. Because no pastor ever birthed a lamb. Sheep birthed lambs. I'm going back very many, 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 many years ago, maybe 60, 55 years ago. There were many people getting saved in our local Assemblies of God church. And they said to John Stechman, the pastor then, wow, you've become quite the evangelist, haven't you? He said, I didn't know one of those people. Those are the people that all the people have been witnessing to all week long. That's why they're in the church. Our functions differ. You're not all pastors, all evangelists, all teachers, prophets, prophets, but you're all in the ministry. If you understand that, you don't need the recognition. You don't need a board to point to. And your ministry is to the world. I've got a new saying. Go and learn to gossip the gospel. <laughs> How about that? How about chit-chatting the gospel wherever you go? How about to chit-chat the good news? For instance, I go take dry cleaning. And there's an Indian girl there. They're all Indians. She's very sweet, she's pretty. We say, chit chat, what's your phone number? Take and go. But it develops. Where are you from? We talked about that. Where are you from? Talked about that. And she said, uh, Where are you going this weekend? 
I said, I'm going to California. She said, to do what? I said, to preach. Bible, she says, are you a preach Christian? I said, never. I don't preach Christian. I don't want religion. Do you want religion? You Hindus are full of religion. You know how many gods you have? She's looking straight at me. We've developed a relationship. Every time the dry cleaning comes, I've only got dirty clothes to go and reach her. I could take them elsewhere. But we've established something now. So she says to me, I said, what's your name? She gave me her name. I said, you Hindus have got so many gods, and you know what? You made them with your own hands. And you cut out the place for their eyes, and you bow down, you give them their ablations, and they don't hear you, and they can't heal you, and they can't help you, and, they, and you pray to them, they're dead. They're all of your Hindus. Is that true? She said, yes. I said, when I go to preach there, I go to preach about a relationship. She said, a relationship? I said, yes, about Jesus, because he heals the sick. And he raises the dead. And he answers your prayer. When I pray, he talks to me. And I talk back to him. She says, when you come back, will you teach me to? Now I've got to get past her husband, but God can do that too. That's the gossiping of the gospel. And Pastor Fred, I'm saying, for evangelism for the church, it's the key to this church. There are 47 churches in this town, but there's not a big dent very much in the kingdom of darkness. He doesn't mind us when we worship. We're not a threat to him because the worship's to the Father. The Father's seeking worship, worshipers, and we must satisfy his heart. But the Son of God is seeking the lost and we must satisfy his heart. He's not affected by our worship. He doesn't tremble, but he trembles at the word and he trembles when you're unafraid to talk to people on the plane. You don't have to win them. The Lord spoke to me. I said, Lord, it's impossible. He said, you don't have to win the lost. You don't have to die for them. You don't have to do anything. Just tell them about me. We so want to come with all our scriptures. You don't have to come with the scriptures that love the unsaved. See them. See the prostitutes. I talk to the whole lot. Come on. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. Amen. The greatest travesty, travesty we face in the Western world is not taking our cities and communities for God. Oh, yes, there are churches rising up. They're going to take back the nations. They're going to take back kingdoms. They're going to keep the church all in order without the king. It's not possible. King Jesus will come till the kingdoms of the world become the kingdoms of his dear son. And he will stand on this earth. And the glory of God is going to be revealed as the waters cover the sea. The knowledge of the Lord shall cover the earth. All hands are needed on deck. The sheep bring forth the lambs, and there's a new vision for this church. I ask them specifically, don't tell me what that is. Can you articulate it? They said yes. Because these are people who are spirit-filled, who love the church and love people and love Jesus, and they want him in the church more than ever. But a leader who develops a vision as he does, and he put it in the compass of the people, they take ownership of it. And you're going to take ownership because you spoke of that 10 years, but it cannot be by our might, not by our power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And that's the quickening power of God to so shake you, even you, Dean, sitting on that front row in the name of the Lord. A new mighty infilling I believe many are going to see new things. You're going to dream dreams. But your change of heart must be a total radical visitation of the Holy Spirit of God in you. Because what starts in the flesh ends in the flesh. What starts in the Spirit produces the fruit of that Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. The Baptists would never think of having church without doing a baptism. The Catholics would never think of doing church without confession and Mary. 
and the Pentecostal churches. That's all of us who are tongue taught us. We have, we have, we talk about it, but we have not seen the power. If we're honest, this man, years, has got to be different. Get ready. You're going to prophesy and you're going to speak forth. There's going to be a lot of deliverance taking place too. From demonic spirits. So here's a charge to you this morning. Three things. Surrender every area of your life and start to serve. Not necessarily Grace Life Church, but start to serve the Lord Jesus wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Totally surrender your life. You older Christians, we sometimes need the greatest visitation. Do you remember the church in Croydon or South London, somewhere, Elam? We were praying in the back room. Little pastor doing his business, running in and out, and everybody getting ready. And I heard these words. They've seen it all before, no matter who comes through the door. I thought, oh gosh. I just sat quietly. Came in. Packed our church, people sitting in their rows, just looking for it. Sung our hymns, nothing. And suddenly I hear the Holy Spirit sing. He said, sing. We've seen it all before. We've seen it all before. No matter who comes through the door, we've seen it all before. Please let me not be like that. Can a child teach me? Can I learn from a young Christian? Can somebody ask me to do something and I not have a belligerent spirit? Check your temperature, man. Number two, realize that the expectations and the dreams and the longings for Grace Life Church, listen carefully, things are about to get messy because people are involved. I, haven't, I was about to say, thanks for finishing, because you're involved. May people be wiped out here. Somebody here healed of paralysis, a demonic spirit there being released here, yes. a marriage being restored here, not because the pastor's preaching, but as calling it forth, but as he preaches, suddenly the glory comes amongst us, suddenly people are kneeling, suddenly they're crying out. Do you remember down in San Francisco, about 15 minutes into speaking on the first night, on Hannah? People were weeping, weeping, weeping. That was a move of God. You cannot engineer that, but we've got to pray it into being. And you've got to pray for this lost harvest sitting in this country, in this city, for 20, 50 mile radius. It's going to get messy, and I say, God, bring it on. Sorry, I'll be finished. We yearn for Jesus, number three. You've got to yearn for Jesus to visit his body with an outpouring of the Spirit and usher in a real visitation of God. A supernatural outpouring affecting thousands in the watershed of this region. And I know we talk about revival, but help me, it means too many things to too many people now. If you want one, you have it. And I know very well-known people speak that. But you look at the revivals that did touch the world, the Hebrides, the Hebridean, the Welsh revival. There was such a move of God in the Welsh revival that those Welsh miners had these mules and the mules used to go down into the mines to bring back the coal on their loads. Strong animals. But there was such a move, every pub closed, every bar in town closed. You can buy it, you can see it. I want to challenge you to think what you're saying. That when all the miners got saved, they went down to the mines to mine in the mornings, but the the mules could no longer understand them because they didn't curse anymore. (laughs) They had to get rid of all of the mules. It's part of history that went around the world. Isn't that wonderful? 
Nearly done. I ask again, can, living, can Lincoln be visited from on high? You have an anointing to preach, teach. John says you have the anointing. Yes. You have it. You can't actually get any more. I know we've taught that, right. but I'm changing it. He just wants to get out. Right. Yeah. Yes. That's good. You can't get more, you can't pray more. But every, you know what they say to me in Orlando? Well, I'm in the church, the church, the church, the church, excuse me. And they're down in the church. I get so mad at them. You have no idea. I said, oh, really? Yes, we never see the blind sea. We don't see these things we see in Africa. And we don't see this and we don't see that. And we don't see people in the street. Ah, I said, uh, when did you uh, lay your hands on a blind person? You know that person in the hospital? Did you command them to get out of that bed and walk in the name of Jesus? Right. You have the anointing. Stay in the presence of Jesus. And he'll manifest himself through you. Yes. You have the anointing. Be the person that God can use. You know what Ryan Bonke says? Don't pray, God, use me. I remember when he preached it. He said, God, make me usable. Because we're not usable sometimes. We're so miserable and always fighting. And the other ones are so sure that they're the only evangelists ever in the world. But we've got to be so infused with Jesus, the presence of Jesus. And in that anointing, to reach out and touch ordinary people. Finally, be catalysts for God's purposes. The younger generation, they're not in here. And I see some young people. But I'm telling you what, God is going to call great things for them. Amen. And if you're an older person, invite four young people to your house, serve them some hot dogs and sit around the table. I'm ashamed that we put old people out to pasture so soon. Come on. Mm-hmm. Come on. Come on. It's true. Catherine Booth. Booth is the granddaughter of General Booth of the Salvation Army. She was 83 years old and invited me to her home. I thought, oh. I go and sit at her house. She pours tea. She's very quiet, sitting watching me. And I thought, I can't wait for some gem from this lady. Great author, great woman of the spirit. Fearless for God. She said, I invited you for tea today because I need help. Yes. She said, I'm struggling to pray. I'm struggling to pray. I thought, you? She said, it's really difficult for me. Perhaps you have a gem. Could you put your head on, hand on my head and help them unlock something in me that I can find a new place of prayer? I was so humbled I couldn't even speak. Be the godly, vibrant influence the younger generation need. Be your full potential to impact families. And let him out, he's a mighty river. And pray into into reality the vision of this church. I'm going to take you where you've never been. I'm going to lead you into areas that you never thought you would go. And you're going to walk lightly. The things that you felt that you were so needed in your life, you're going to find it easy to put it away. You will lose your fear of people. You'll be able to say, thus and thus saith the Lord, and not pass an opinion. For I, the Lord, will speak through you. And I'll place your feet on level ground. You won't be stumbling to the left or the right. You'll have a purpose that is so defined by the presence of God in your life that your face will shine and you will not know it. For these are the days of my presence. These are the days of my power. These are the days of my extraordinary grace on the world and my fathomless mercy. 
Be merciful. Be merciful. You will be released from judgments. You will be released from policing others, the Lord says. You will be released from expectations that are false. They're all mental constructs. The Holy Spirit is telling me. You will be released from these excuses and stuff you put up. The Holy Spirit says you're going to be released into a new area that you never thought. And prayer will increase in this church. And there's a few that come to pray. And God bless them. Who knows, maybe this place is there because they prayed. The Lord said, I will do my work. You do the lifting and I will do the drawing. Now as we close, just hold it and nobody's going to move. There's a lost world. You want to take up from where we left off? It was a Wednesday night when eyes had oil put on them. Holy Spirit, I solve that you would look at people in a different light. Here we are, in the same place, same, just four months later. Lincoln can be saved, and it will be saved, but you're responsible. Now, in the name of Jesus, a break off the fear. Is anything too hard for me, says the Lord? No. Break the fear of intimidation and smallness in your own mind. And breathe, breathe in the Spirit of God. Breathe into your body. Breathe in the Spirit of God. Let Him transform you. And now, Father, I pray for faith activated actions are so dynamic in this city that this place will not be big enough to contain the bruised and the broken. Now, if you have a heart for souls, come now quickly. Because you're going to be held accountable. If you get received prayer, Cindy, just wait a moment, please, when you get there. You've got a heart for souls. Yeah. But you're not really talking to people about Jesus. You talk to Christians about Jesus. You find it easy to do that. How about your dry cleaner? How about the person at the till? You'll never do this in your own strength. Pastor, come with me. I'm going to pray for the Holy Spirit. Put that down, on my boy. Put it down on the floor. Raise your hands to God. Praise you, Jesus. Jesus. Call forth evangelists. Thank you, Lord. Call forth evangelists. Yes. Make me a soul when I say it. Lead me to Thank some you, soul Jesus. today. Teach me, Lord, just what to say. Thank you, Lord. Mm. And if you never led a soul to the Lord, and you're not a guilt, but right now, before you do, pastor comes, I'm saying right now, say, Lord, I want to lead one person to the Lord before December. Yes. Say it. Yes, Lord. Help us to lead one person to the Lord before yes. This year, Lord, Lord, you heard that. Thank you, Lord. You heard that. Yes. You heard that. Thank you, Jesus. Our eyes are upon you, Lord. Our focus is upon you. You hear a healing in the minds and a release mm. of your power. Jesus. Pastor. Speak. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you. You see those, these hands raised. Father, give them a mouth. Give them utterance. In Jesus' name. Just just take in because the presence of God, the anointing of God is here. And can I tell you something? Your life will be filled with joy every time you declare Jesus, every time you share Jesus, every time just the mention of his name in the ear of another hurting heart. It will revive you. It will refresh you. And some of you, as you share Jesus, the, the things that your burdens will be lifted. They'll be removed from your life. And so, Father, I pray now for divine appointments. Lift your hands up. And divine do appointments work. right now do in Jesus' name. Divine, divine connections in the workplace, in the marketplace, on the highways and byways at Walmart, on your jobs, even your family members who you said you would never be able to tell concerning Jesus, that they would reject you. God say, don't, don't, don't count that out. 
even the ones you prayed for, grandmas and grandpas, you will have a mouth and you will have an utterance and you will have an open door for God is opening doors of utterance to you, even according to the scriptures. And so, Father, I pray for fresh vision, for fresh utterance, for fresh desires, Lord, to declare Jesus, Spirit, to speak pray, of his grace and of his love that you have received. Freely you have received. I declare freely give. You need not be afraid of the faces of men. You need not be afraid of persecution, but this is just part of our part of our, our, our life. Some may talk, but don't fret. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for fresh anointing, a fresh touch. In Jesus' name, a fresh unction. In the name of the Lord, Joan, that's coming upon you in a greater way. In Jesus' name, that the anointing, that break freshness the of the in Lord. Your mouth. In Jesus' a name, the word, an utterance, an unction. Speak it out in now, the name, man. Boldness, boldness, Prophesy boldness, boldness, boldness a fresh God. boldness Speak. to declare listen. Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Say, Lord oh, coming. by the Spirit of God, divine God, connections, Lord, divine appointments. In Jesus' name, to declare Him, to speak of I His love, of His grace, of His transforming power i thank you lord for that in the name of jesus of freshness hallelujah to declare jesus divina to declare him with boldness in jesus name i thank you for it father in the name of jesus and upon you kelly freshness a boldness in jesus name god will give you a mouth and carol in the name of jesus Oh, in your workplace, a fresh anointing in your career to declare Hallelujah. him and to be boldly declare him in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I want to step right over here. And you too, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for that anointing, for that freshness in the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Father, that you quicken. So you don't have to worry about what to, what to say. God will fill your mouth. Hallelujah. We look to you. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Let your healing presence now fill this place. Healing presence. Jesus Say, I look name. to you. I look Jesus. to you. We look to you, Lord Jesus. I look to you, Lord. Thank you, Father. May your healing presence fill this place. Sing that again. I look to you. I look to you, Lord Jesus. I look I you. to you, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Let, let your healing presence Lord, fill this Jesus, place. A freshness. I know Adventures. you're here. Divine appointments. I know you're the here, glory of God. Lord. Thank you for it. My keep, my eyes on your holy face. Thank you, Father. That's right. I know you're here. In Jesus' name. I know Jesus. you're here, Lord. I keep my eyes Lord. upon your holy Divine face. I Freshness. look to you. I look In Jesus' name. I look to you, look to you Lord, Lord. Jesus. May your healing presence fill this place. Jesus. I know you're here. I know you're here, Lord. My eyes on you, upon your hope. I know you're here. I know you're here. Sing that again. I know you're here. I know you're here. I keep my eyes. I keep my eyes upon your home. Sing it again, sing it. I know you're here. Praise Jesus. Again. I know you're here. Lord. I keep my eyes upon your holy face. I was 
and I sing it again. I look to you. I look to you, Lord. May your healing presence fill this place. I know you. I keep my eyes. So we've just got to linger a little bit more. I know you're here. Yes, sing it. I know you're here. I know you're here. I know you're here. I know you're here. upon this work today. We know you're here. We know you're here. Be filled with the Spirit. Pray, just be filled. Just be blessed. Just be filled with the presence of God, the anointing of God. Because that's the anointing that helps us to share Jesus, to declare Him in the streets, to declare Him. That's His presence. Take that impartation. Hallelujah. And be refreshed and be blessed. God will give you a mouth. God will give you a voice. You need not wonder, what shall I say? How shall I present Jesus? God, the Holy Spirit will quicken in you and your words will flow beautifully. It may only be one or two words. You don't have to worry about it. You can't preach like this person or declare. God will give you a voice. He'll give you an opportunity and he'll give you the utterance. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Praise the Lord. You know, Pastor? Yes, Carol. None of you limit God. Brian Bonker, I don't like to just use his name, but he turned 73. And just two weeks ago, we were sitting with him. And he looked at straight Greg and I and he said, You know what? Don't limit God. It's not to be, it's not funny. Now, this is something of the Spirit. I'm writing poetry. 
Who could have thought of such a thing? And it is the pure gospel. He said, do you want me to read to you? And he, read a, he wrote a poem about the woman at the well. It is so riveting. And it lasted eight minutes. He said, do you like it? Oh, can I read another? He said, I'll read about the Phoenician woman. And that wonderful voice that you heard today. He started to read. He said, it was the pure gospel. Never limit God. Never limit God. There are things that are going to be birthed in your lives. No more standing at the front for the same thing. Come on. Right, right. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory. You know, one thing I remember years ago, I heard Reinhard Bonnke say this, and it stuck with my spirit all these years because I've said the same thing, and many people didn't agree. But he said, heaven's going to outnumber hell by great numbers. And we are a part, the body of Christ. We are his mouthpiece. And I've always, I've always believed that. And you know, Pastor, this week I sequestered myself away before the Lord, crying out for this fellowship, crying out for you for being so faithful. And this is the song the Lord gave me for this fellowship. Mm. I look to you. Sing it. I look to you. Don't hurry this song. Put your hand. I know you. I look to you. Put your hand on your heart. May your healing presence fill this place. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. I hope, thank you so much, Carol, for just sharing your heart. Did you receive that from, from thank you so much? You may be seated. You may be seated just for another moment. We're going to close in just a moment, but please, please take your seat.